Yeah. So we'll do tan and white lunch money. I stole these things off the wall. That's all right. I didn't steal them. I'm gonna pay for them. But <laughs> uh, so this is a Gamma B10S size four. I actually tie most of mine. I don't know if y'all are familiar with Airx hooks. They're out of Denmark. They're really, really, really good. I just left them on home apparently. So <laughs> I got a bunch of eights. So we can tie a small one afterwards. But they're real similar to a B10S. The Umka ones are tied on a B10S. Um, Umka carries a two and a six, I think, and I tie them from twos to eights. I used to do a 10 and it's too much work. Um, so this is a really, like, I'm, I'm big on, all right, don't look in this box. I'm big on really simple flies. <laughs> and, um, for the most part, I'll tie, I tie plenty of complicated stuff for people who want it, but I like simple flies and I like flies that are interchangeable for a variety of uses. And I also like flies that are, um, where you can change maybe one aspect of it and it's a completely different fly. Just improvise, like don't get stuck just tying it this way because it's how so-and-so does it or it's how I do it or you know, it's how you've always done it. Like fly tying should be about experimentation. Um, so, that's my soapbox. I'll get off now. <laughs> uh, so, I use Vivas thread for most of my stuff. Their power thread is a 140 and it's super duper strong. Like, it's really hard for me to break. Um, Ultra thread 140 works fine too. I'm going to start my eye about a hook eye length back. So, I give it like 15 wraps, then I'll twist it straight and do like 15 more and some people get really hardcore and they want to glue it all up and all it takes is one fish and it's going to break it break like the lock anyway so i don't even bother um umqua uses some kind of like space age polymer space shuttle glue on theirs and i can't get it to twist off so <laughs> um the other thing to do so after you've tied those on is just some figure eight wraps where you're going over the shank and underneath the eyes and, and pull it tight and break your thread you don't have to break your thread, that's optional. <laughs> but if you pull it tight enough, it kind of cinches those wraps up underneath. It's really quiet in here. Music just stopped. So I'm going to wrap back. Always find a consistent stopping point on your fly. That way you know they're kind of consistent and I'll talk a little bit about this later. Um, but in, in production tying, consistency is like number one. It's not about how fast you can do it. It's not about any of that. If your flies always look and act the same, then you can comfortably say they are the same. Um, there's a lot of, in the age where everybody on Instagram has a fly company now, <laughs> um, you just, Consistency is key. Speed comes later. Like design comes later. Consistency is key. Even when you're tying like just regular hairs ears, like find find where you're gonna start your tail every time. You know, tie your thor or your abdomen in, wrap your rib the same way every time, same number of wraps, and your flies will catch more fish, they'll stay together longer. Um, everybody will be happy. Uh, so these are I use mostly hairline rabbit because it's the best. Um, this is their Greavy Bunny, which is like, they took it back to the 60s and time, or tie dyed it. Um, so I have this in a bunch of different colors, but this is like a, a white, brown, yellow mix that I really like. I'm sure Andy would special order you some if you really wanted some. <laughs> so for the tail, because rabbit is a natural material, it's gonna vary in how long it is. Like this is a pretty good one because that's like, what, almost two inches long there, but sometimes you'll get a crappy one and it's only maybe an inch long. So I always measure my tail by the skin side, by that side, because it's always gonna be the same length every time. So I want it just to be just longer than the shank of the hook. So that's my tail and this is a four. So you poke it through skin side, take it out of the vise, pop it over the hook shank, and just settle it down there, and then pop it back in. 
because this fly is going to ride hook up in the water. Um, I designed it. Uh, this is based off of uh, Charlie Craven's Gonga pattern. Um, I think Umquid discontinued the single one, but you guys still have the double one over there I saw. Mm -hmm. But I wanted something that it would ride hook up. Um, event, uh, originally I tied this with a craft fur head and then they came out with Senyos like 10 years ago. Um, I don't know, eight years ago when I first started tying this fly. And that's what I swapped it to. So anyway, uh, find where the skin kind of meets your your uh, hide there and just tie it in like that. It's a magic trick. <laughs> Pretty cool trick. That is a magic trick. I can only do it with this bobbin. So like if you get one of those heavy loon bobbins and do it, it'll fly off and hit you in the nose. <laughs> but it's for me like because I tie flies, this is what I do like full time. Like speed is 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 money. Time is money for me. So any any time I can save, you know, a couple seconds, and all you have to do is just pull that tight, and it cinches all this down, so it's not going to go anywhere. That's pretty. Sweet. And it looks cool. That is. So I'm a hit at parties. <laughs> it's come up with my drink and my little vice. And <laughs> like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> all right, so. What I did is I took that, that tag in of the bunny after I tied it down and wrapped it up twice. Um, when you build, when you're thinking about bait fish flies, and it's even more pronounced in the sculpt than you guys have, I'm mostly tying flies in Austin to imitate shad or like little darters or baby bass, sunfish, stuff like that. They have more of a of a narrow shape to them. The sculpins you guys have are a little bit more robust, especially the fins in the front. Uh, but you have your classic kind of teardrop bait fish shape, you know, when you look at it from the side. What a lot of people forget is there's also taper when you look at it straight. If you're looking in the eyes of a sculpin, it also tapers down the side like this too on the other axis. So I like to build that into my flies and it's easy just to wrap a, a collar of bunny to where it kind of breathes really naturally in the water like that. So now you have a taper top and bottom, top, bottom, and side rather. Um, legs. All flies need legs. <laughs> if you come up with a cool fly on Instagram, tag me in it, and I'll add legs to it, and then I'll call it mine. <laughs> Just let me know. Um, so I like legs on my patterns. Um, these are loco legs just from Hairline. Uh, I use the grizzly legs a lot. These uh, fusion legs that are kind of chrome and two colored are really cool. Uh, the chacon legs that you guys carry are really good. I use those a lot too. Just don't be afraid to experiment with your colors. I try and keep it kind of like color coordinated in my fly. So these are like a tan with some gold and black flakes to them. So I'm just going to take two of these and pop them off and just find find like the midpoint tie them in on the near side of the hook towards you right in the middle right right behind the eye take the front one and pull it back and wrap back over it and that just secures them to the other side um, and then it's so we didn't cut them in half so like a fish can't grab it by the leg and pull it out like and it'll pull the whole thing out <laughs> All right, so you to cut those to be about as long as a tail. Where's my trash bag? There's a lot of marabou in there. Nobody sneeze. Uh, so now we're going to just build the rest of the head of the fly. All of that is done with laser dub. So I'm going to start with white. The main problem most people have tying this fly is they use way too much dub. And they throw it out there on the animus behind Walmart and it, the fly floats. <laughs> I get lots of people send me messages, hey, why does your lunch money float? I was like, did you tie it? Or did you buy it from a shop? I'm like, oh no, I tied this. And I was like, you probably use like a pack of laser dub. <laughs> like, yeah, I thought this was no. So this is a regular kind of pinch that I use. And this is a double because I start with a double. So actually what I'm gonna do is just straighten those fibers out so they're all kind of facing the same way. I'm gonna take it and kind of just kind of pull it in half to where I have half of it. And then I have, it's it's like a V in my hand now. There's a direct, there's a middle notch there. 
I'm gonna stick the eyes in the notch. I'm gonna hold it kind of soft with my left hand and give it just two loose wraps and that just spreads it all the way around the hook shank. We'll kind of stroke this front fiber back, give it half a dozen wraps and now that's your base. So that goes all the way around. The next ones we're gonna do, this is a tan. We're gonna color coordinate now. We're gonna do tan on the top here which is the bottom of the hook with the top of the fly. Wrap it in in the middle. And white on the bottom. Give it a couple wraps. Our water, in, like when you think of Texas bass fishing, you probably think like of stained and like muddy water and like big gnarly like brush flies and stuff like that. So our water is actually clearer than most of the water around here, with the exception of like of some of the high country creeks and stuff. Like the San Gabriel where I fish a lot is clearer than my bathtub. Like I'll fill it up and it's it's clear. Um, so I'm big on like realistic colors, muted colors, blending colors together. I think color in flies is more important uh, the clearer your water becomes. Um, so you guys, I mean, I, I think color is super important here too. Uh, where did my rust go? So I like to put, all that being said, I like to put just a little hint of gill color in this particular color that I do. What's your thoughts on flash? <sighs> you can always cut it off if you add it but I don't fish a whole lot of flash unless I'm fishing really big flies that should have flash. Like you think if a big shad or something goes broadside or you see a big trout like eat a nymph off the bottom, a lot of times you're gonna see it flash. Cause, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a big body to it. For something this small, this muted flash that's in here is enough for me. Okay, yeah, look that later then. Um, and I'll tie, I'm gonna tie a craft for bait fish probably after a while and then we'll talk about lots of flash because if you guys are fishing pike or smallies or something they'll they don't mind flash for the most part so this is just a little tiny tuft of this stuff like little bitty tuft and i'm going to set it on the side right behind the eyes just like i did those legs two wraps grab this front piece move it over to the back and then just wrap over it and then you have a little just a hand of gill color on that side Go up to the eye of the hook, same deal again. <coughs> this time I'm actually tearing the material in half because I'm trying to give it more bulk up front instead of the length going back. It's not vital, it's just how I've gone to tying them. Because I try and keep it kind of sparse with this last piece because I don't, if you get this stuff wet, it sheds water pretty easily. But I like to be able to throw these on a four weight a lot of times, um, so I try and keep them kind of sparse. Most of the time I'm fishing a five with these. I gave my dad, this is a four, my dad doesn't like the stringer fish, and I gave him one in a size eight on the Dolores, and he told me it was like throwing a wet squirrel. <laughs> like, Come on, dad. <laughs> like, he's got a good four weight. And... So I just folded those pieces back and exposed the eye of the hook. Give it a couple of wraps for a thread dam to kind of, oh crap, I moved it again, oh, sorry. Good. Do your thing. Um, and then just whip finish it. I don't whip finish by hand. My hand ones are sloppy and the tool ones aren't, so I choose to <laughs> give it the extra couple seconds with the tool one. All right, so you can fish this, but we're not done yet. Uh, so I always take a little bit of this loon flow and just cut those thread wraps. I like the fluorescent dyed one because it just adds a little bit of trigger to the fly. And I tie with a lot of fluorescent threads too. Just, just gives you a little hot spot. And I like adding those in my flies. You want a, lot, you want a picture with them that have like that? Sure. Looks all sexy. So that's why I do these with orange thread and even even though we added that gill color in you can see that little orange kind of hot spot where we tied the rest of that stuff in too. Alright so we got that. 
I'm going to talk about how to blend some marker on this guy too. Um, so I like to add just a little bit of just a little bit of throat color. So what I do is I come in with the yellow marker and just really lightly do that. And I'm going to fade it with some orange, just a little bit. Now if you hit it with a brush right now while it's still wet, this is just like a brass brush. See, it kind of fades that orange into that yellow and fades the yellow into the white. That's full of tricks, man. That's a crazy trick. Yep, that's a Charlie trick. This is a Charlie brush, too. Oh, nice. I got it from him. He's actually coming to Dallas next week. I'm going to drive up and see him. I haven't seen him in a long time. That's wild. But wait, there's more. <laughs> All, just about every predatory bait fish species have some sort of camouflage. So I add barring to pretty much all of these. I just take a little brown marker, and I this is this is definitely what I picked up from Charlie too, for his uh, tan and white ganga, or tan and yellow ganga. Add a little bit of that, and you can do the throat and the top barring in the same step. Just a little bit of yellow between. So you can leave it like this, or again, you can just take it and. Brush it like that. That's it.